today. The purpose of these web pages are to introduce you to the calculations that you have to be able to do for this course, um, and especially the calculations that you do for assignment two. Now, if you can do the calculations in assignment two and you really understand what you are doing, you should be able to do all the calculations for that, that we can ask for you in the exam. Right, so um, let's first see why we do these calculations. Now, you've learned in this course that we have surplus units in the economy and that we have deficit units. The surplus units will have extra funds that they don't need at the moment and they want to invest it in some way. And the deficit unit have expenditure that they need to finance in some way. So they are looking for funds. So these two have to com come into contact with each other in some way. Um, the surplus units have to decide how they will invest their funds and the deficit units have to decide how they will finance their deficit. Right, now what will surplus units look at when they decide what to do with their funds? They will of course have to look at the return that they can earn. They will have to consider the term for which they want to invest. They will have to look at the risk attached to the investment and then they will also have to consider the liquidity. In other words, how easy and how quickly they can turn that investment into cash if they need it. The deficit unit, when, deficit unit, when they have to decide how to finance the deficit, have several options. They can borrow directly from someone, a surplus unit, or you can borrow from the bank, so you can use bank credit. Now, if a company has a deficit, let's say it wants to expand its factory, they can also issue financial instruments. Now these financial instruments actually mean that they are selling something to the surplus unit. In other words, actually they're borrowing directly from the surplus unit. Now we are going to look at different kinds of financial instruments and we're look, going to look at the calculations concerning these financial instruments. The surplus units will usually be the parties that will be doing these calculations because they have to decide how they want to invest and where they want to invest and they have to be able to compare the different instruments with each other. So we are going to look at money market instruments And when we look at money market instruments, um, we are going to look at different types of money market instruments. We're going to look at discount instruments. We're going to look at interest add-on instruments. And then we're also going to look at a type of instruments that banks usually use to finance a deficit, which we call repurchase agreements. Right, now money market instruments will be used and issued by deficit units when they want to finance a short-term deficit. They are short-term instruments and they will usually have a maturity of less than a year, while surplus units will therefore, if they invest in money market instruments, they will be investing for a short term. If a deficit unit has a longer-term deficit, it wants to borrow for a longer term, it can issue bonds. Now, bonds are debt that is issued by the deficit unit and the surplus unit 
can buy these bonds and they're going to get a regular return on it in the form of coupons and then at the end of the lifespan of this bond there's also going to be a capital return so we're going to look at all the calculations concerning bonds as well then the um, next instrument that we are involved with in this course are called equities or shares Now, when a company issues shares, the surplus units are actually buying a part of that company. So, on bonds, you will pay interest. Deficit units will pay interest on that. Um, if you own a share in the company, you will get a part of the profit of that company, and we call that dividends. Um, we're not really going to do any calculations concerning equities. There are some calculations that you can do which can help you to compare um, shares with bonds um, and we can, which can also help you to compare different shares with each other, but we're not going to do for these web pages any calculations concerning that. Right, then we are also going to look at the foreign exchange market. Now, the foreign exchange market, the purpose of the foreign exchange market is not really to bring deficit and surplus units into contact with each other. Um, the foreign exchange market is a place where um, foreign currencies can be traded with each other. So if you have rand and you want to change it for dollar, you can go to the foreign exchange market and you can change it there. Or if you have rand and you you have dollars and you want to change it to rand, the same thing can happen. Um, sometimes a surplus unit can buy foreign exchange if it thinks that the value of the currency is going to change, so they can profit from maybe holding rand or from holding dollars. So it can be used by a surplus unit to. Um, to invest, but it, that's not really the main purpose. Um, we will do some calculations concerning the foreign exchange market, but mostly just so that you can understand how the currencies are traded. And then um, the last type of financial instrument that we have is called derivatives. Now, a derivative instrument is an instrument where you have a another underlying asset. So you will have maybe a contract to buy a share in the future and that contract is a derivative instrument and the underlying instrument is then the share. Um, we're not really going to do calculations concerning derivatives. We don't do any calculations concerning derivatives in this course at all. Um, we will just look at the logic um, behind an option instrument. So. That is more or less what we're going to do in this series of web pages.